everything set here. Close this out, make sure that I'm live. Welcome to my lunchtime live. Oh, there I am. Let's make this bigger so I can see your comments. <clears throat> um, come on in. Let's take a little break in our day and be creative. I um, hope that I have worked out all of my technical glitches. For those of you who caught my lunchtime live, not live last week, um, you know that. I had a little uh, technical difficulties with my sound, um, so hopefully that will not happen today. So welcome, when you pop on, tell me hello and talk to me. Um, I see Cindy's watching from North Dakota. So curious, Cindy, if you guys have um, snow over there. We had some snow when we were up north and I'm not sure what part of North Dakota you're in. <clears throat> oh, I had my window open because of a breeze, but I don't want that to affect my, um, my microphone. So, um, oh great, Cindy, thank you so much for sharing. I absolutely love it when you share with friends. Um, hopefully this, I keep getting notices that my live broadcast has been interrupted. So I'm hoping that this isn't um, too, uh, oh, is this still working? Yep. I'm hoping that this is not too choppy. Hi, Carol. Hi, Sue. Glad to see you. It's been a long time. Hope that you guys have been stamping. I know Sue has been stamping. She sent me a picture of, um, I think it was the grandkids, right, Sue, that were making some cards. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Come on in, everyone. Take a creative break in your day. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Rose Boonwald, and I'm stamping with you today in my uh, craft room, my studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. Uh, I am starting to make my Christmas cards. I'm probably a little bit behind the eight ball because I think there's a lot of um, <clears throat> stampers who have been making their Christmas cards already, and um, I know it takes a little bit of time. You can see this beautiful artwork. Oh, I gotta go this way. Behind me, my niece made that artwork, and this picture right here was the cutest thing. She was um, coloring the picture and wanted to write her name on it. And her and I have become pen pals during COVID. She's three years old. And as she was going to write her name on it, she said, I think I'm gonna fold this in half and make it like a cowd. <laughs> So she wanted to turn her artwork into a card, and I think that she is after my heart, of course. So um, <clears throat> I have prizes today. I will be giving them away at the end. So I'm going to turn this around and get to stamping right away. Let's see here. There we go. I got my notes over here so I don't lose my measurements. And I'm going to move my microphone a little bit so you can hear me as I'm stamping a little closer. Now remember, the prizes I'm giving away at the end are for shares, comments, likes, so make sure you get these videos shared because I have fabulous prizes for my shares. Of course, I throw the comments and the likes in there too. Love it when you um, engage with me. It's really fun. So today we are starting with the Warm and Toasty stamp set. For those who don't have this, this is adorable. Let me get my mouse out of the way here. Um, so super cute. Okay, this thing is backwards from how I would be. So let me show you. We've got some adorable little things here, some really cute sayings. I love the font of this cursive stuff here. Um, a reindeer, a polar bear skating, little polar bear, and these bunnies that are caroling. Adorable. This is a cling stamp set, not faux polymer. Um, and the colors we're using today, uh, I've got garden green, real red, very blah. And then I've got a piece here from the what's it called? Toil Tidings Designer Series Pig. So the piece I'm using is this striped piece in the package. I've been using this a lot, actually, as I start my Christmas cards. So um, there's this really cute checkered plaid pattern, um, buffalo plaid, if you will, kind of looking thing. And then we've got these country scenes, and they're the same on both sides. One garden green, one is real red. Um, some wildlife and outdoorsy on here, um, and more of the plaid, oh, these beautiful, um, 
I would call that like trimmery, if you will. Um, so anyway, I love the colors in the set. It's kind of vintagey Christmas is what I like to think of it as. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. All right. Um, so let's get to cutting. We are going to, for our garden green, they're going to be some unique measurements because the card I'm making today is not your typical card. It's a little bit of a, I don't know if it's a full on fun fold, but when we're done, you and the card are going to get to show off both sides of your designer series paper. I always hate that we have to hide one side. So, okay, I'm going to cut this piece to five and a half by four and a quarter. So five and a half. And that's just a quarter sheet of paper. Move my paper out of the way. And next I'm going to cut a very vanilla piece. I've got some scraps here. This one is going to be five quarter by four. So let me cut the four. And then five and quarter. So this very vanilla piece is a quarter inch smaller on each side from our garden green piece. Hi Wynn, welcome. Glad you could catch me live. <clears throat> uh, next I'll do real red. And this one is going to be five and a half. And then five and a half by three and three quarters. And then our designer series paper, we want four by 11. Now the way I want this card to look done. Um, I want the short end to be cutting across these stripes and the lawn will cut with the stripes. So let's go and do our in first. If you were starting out with a, um, this is right. 11. Yep, this is how I want this. Um, if you start with a 12 by 12 piece, you just cut off an inch. I'm not entirely sure, but that's what size I have here. So, leave the traps. <laughs> so, I'm going to use this arm on the trimmer. Isn't it awesome? Okay, and then this side we need to cut down four inches. There we go. This is a scrap. Hi, Renata. Welcome. Glad you could be live. <clears throat> now, if you need, I gotta find my bone folder. If you need any of these supplies, you can just click shop with me on my website here, countrycardsbyrose.blogspot.com. Um, and if you use the host code, I super appreciate that. Uh, because that's what helps me to award you guys some of these prizes and kind of keeps me um, able to buy supplies to make you your cards and everything. Um, but your order's over 150 bucks. Don't use the host code. Still see, and um, you won't get your hostess rewards. All right. So I took my piece of four by Lynn designer series paper and I just fold in half and burnish that edge. Um, I'm gonna set that aside here. We're going to stamp the inside of this card first. So I'm um, looking for my real red. While I'm looking for that, what do you think we should do for a uh, sentiment? I'm thinking sharing Christmas cheer. Where's my real red? Here we go. That sounds like a good one. Uh, these sentiments are really great. I don't quite need this big of a box, so let me... Sometimes when my block's too big, and here's a tip for you, uh, you can t have more mistakes because that ink sometimes gets on the edge of the block. Um, so I like to try and use um, the smallest block possible to kind of hold my cards. Okay, I'm going to try to stamp this straight. What do we think? Think I can do it? Hey, that's pretty darn good. Clean this off with my chamois. This thing is like my favorite favorite stamp here. I'm all about the natural stuff. It just cleans it up with water. So <clears throat> that's not... Now the other thing I want to do... Uh, da -da 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 -da. 
so many people. Topic. I think I'm just gonna leave this. We need now our garden green layer. And I am going to adhere this very vanilla to the garden green. I'm leaving lots of space to write on here. And I don't want to be right over like bumpy glue. So I love the um, stamp and seal for gluing that on. And I'm just entering this here. Not so much. There we go. Okay, and this is the inside card. So remember, I said this one's looking a little different. We have one layer. This is our inside or the back of our card. Okay, now we're going to do something on the front of our card. Oh, and I want to do a little bit of extra in our background here. So I'm just the sentiment that says warm and toasty wishes to you. Now, this tip that I'm going to show here is a great way, by the way, this card I'm demonstrating and I'm not using any dies or big shot at all, okay? And I wanted to do that because I had a couple of people reach out to me saying, hey, I'm just getting started. Can you show make shot until I can kind of save up and buy for that? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to soft and I'll be stamping the sentiment all across this card front. So I'm stamping off to lighten the shade of ink here. But what I'm doing is creating some interest and some kind of sure a little pattern on this paper without having to emboss it or do anything kind of fancy. So I just randomly stamped this across my card front. adorable creatures on here. I'm going to be using the polar bears because I love polar bears. So we're using this adorable guy and this little guy here. And these are <coughs> not colored in. So we're going to be doing some coloring today. I'm going to show you a really cool technique for making this polar bear look very, I mean, as realistic as he can as being a little cartoon here. Um, and I want this to be a layer on the front, fussy cutting, and I've got some tips for you. Too. Now, for those of you who are watching my replay, um, there's a link up above to sign up for my newsletter, um, and you're going to want to do that. It's coming up. I'm working on setting up more uh, live stamping events for a uh, special, and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. So, if you sign up for my newsletter, then you won't miss out. All right, stamping guy. This comes out, you guys, to see the final product because it's super cute. Uh, so, I'm going to be coloring these in with our stamp and blue. And so, because I'm using Lens, which is an alcohol marker, to stamp in your Mento ink. If you use, let's see. If you use Saison ink, it will uh, run. So you need to use the Memento ink all working with your blends. I am curious how many of you use your blends to do most of your coloring. When Stampin' Up! came out with these blends, this is what I'm using like all the time now. I love oils, but I find that the blends are my go-to. <clears throat> so let me know, do you love the blends? Tell me in the comments. I'm really curious if you guys are using these a lot. Um, one thing today, and by the way, we stamp these polar bears on a piece of very vanilla. This is not with very vanilla. Um, <clears throat> and I'm using the ivory blend. Now, this ivory blend comes, a little line, um, markers come in a pack if you want to buy them in a pack, like a real red, for example. Well, this particular blend, if you want to get it in a pack, it comes in a pack with a bronze color. Hi, Peace. Nice to see you. You get to back to work tomorrow. Super excited for you. 
Um, but anyway, these blends come in a two pack if you want a two pack, ivory and bronze. So I'm using the ivory and our blends of course have two ends, tip end and a more broad tipped end. So I'm gonna use the fine tip end and I've got our covers interlock. It makes it super easy, otherwise I know I would lose it. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring this up closer. All I'm gonna do is go around the edge of this pole. So I'm just going to, I'm being really careful so I don't make mistakes here. Just going around his face. Remember when you would color in school with cranes and it looked really cool if you outlined it first in color? That's what I feel. Um, okay, we're going to go here. Just like so. And his tail. Hi, Leslie. Glad you could catch me live. Thank you so much. I hope I've given you lots of ideas for your Stampin' stash. Okay. So what I've done is gone through and I have bare. Now, I, I'm always thinking when I want my colors to realistic, I'm always thinking about where's the light source? How can I get some shadows in here, right? And so I'm imagining the light is coming. So knowing that... I boost up just a little bit. Some of it would then be darkened by a shadow with her hair. Like under his leg, there would be a little shadow. There probably would be one under his um, scar. So just thinking about that. And then I'm going to do the same with this baby bear. Painting. This is super easy, and this is also what's awesome about this set, I should say, is that um, it's coloring, and then I'm going to color in the pads on his. So can you see how there's some um, where do I go? shading there? A little more shading in the shadows. Um, all right, now, when I saw his scarf and I thought of where's Waldo, and we know that Waldo has um, his red and white stripe. So I'm just going in and I'm putting in some red color in these stripes. Now, I, this is just my own personal preference. I want each end stripey part to be colored red. So I didn't necessarily go every other one. And then I would just pick one here in between. And you can scarf whatever color you want. But I'm using real red in this card. Uh, so I wanted to bring that real red into my adorable little polar bear. So, and again, I'm going to bring this closer. Ah, this is so backward. I'm so sorry that I'm going back and forth, guys, here. Um, we've got a shaded polar bear. And the color, it's hard to, it's more pretty in person. All our cards are. But it really, really pops this little bit of color and this shading on a um, cardstock. Now, I am not going to make you sit and watch me fussy cut this whole thing, but I am going to do a little bit to give you some fussy cutting tips. So this particular um, stamp does not come with coordinated eyes. But the pieces are really big, and um, these edges are big, and they're going to be easy to fussy cut. So um, I'm just going to start fussy cutting this big one. Tips for doing some fussy cutting. So the first thing is I like to get the feel of scissors if I can by starting in a really easy See, That's going to be his knee here. I like to leave some white space. I just think that looks sharper outside of the line. So I'm not cutting tight to the line. I'm leaving a little white space. Now to turn and curve my edges, closing my scissors, but and not turning my scissors, I leave my scissors in the same place and instead I turn my paper. So like here, I'm going to curve around his blades on his skate. Instead of moving my scissors, I'm moving my paper, fussy cutting. I'm moving the image. And I have found 
that this helps to be paying close attention so that I don't accidentally sit into a part I don't want. And it helps me to have even curves and corners as I'm cutting. Now, if you get into a tight space that you want to um, snip out, these snips are perfect because they have a really end and these are very sharp. So messy cutting, you absolutely want a very sharp scissors and you want ones with really pointy tips. So let me give you a tip. If I want to cut a notch out of here, really thin area, it makes it really super easy because this pointy tip gets right in there. Like, in fact, I get right up and really, really wanted to. Now I'm not going to be doing that for this card. I'm just showing you how easy it is to come in here. These extra little pieces because these scissors are so pointy and sharp and get in there really nicely. Okay. Now this is a little bit kind of like the magic of TV. I already stamped these and colored them and cut them out for you. So you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. Um, and now I'm going to do, I want to put this guy on the front like so let me get my dimensionals actually I'm gonna do that too because I want to be able to move this down easily so first I'm hard then I'll pop some fun dimensionals um, I'm really curious if you guys do a lot of fussy hopeful that these tips I gave you um, are helpful let me know if that is a little bit helpful for you so uh, now we're hard so I need this total to be four and a quarter, so I gave you the wrong dimension, you guys. Um, instead of being 11 inches long, you want this designer series paper piece to be eight and a half inches, all right? No big deal. All right, we are going to now assemble this card. So I don't have that open. We're going to use this folded designer series paper as our hinge. And I think I want it to go this way. So this is going to go on the back side of our inside layer that we made. So I'm going to do my trusty glue out here. And kind of glue. What I'm going to do is push that right up in the corner, make sure that this looks pretty centered, and it does. There we go. And glue that down. So really cool is now our designer series paper here on the back of our card as well. Gorgeous, huh? And now I've got my card front, so I'm going to be lining up this front layer here. So I'm just going to put a little glue here. I think we need to go a little bit there we go and I'm gonna line up I need to center this so line up the top and bottom and I'm watching to make same art on each side of this that's how I find is the easiest way to do this there we go gluing that down and now we've got you know, that opens like that and shows off both sides of our designer series paper. Um, this, look this off. It's not 100% straight, but that's okay. Um, okay, so now layers on the front. You can kind of see how this is coming together. Let me get out some mentionals here. And so in a way, this is a little old. It doesn't have any fancy gadgets coming out or anything like that but it's a unique way to make a card base and show off both sides of your design series paper okay i'm gonna put my polar bear here on the front now for this i i think i'll put in front in front of my bear so i'm just gonna put a dimensional yeah move a little bit up here by his head and down here by his bottom or her 
I don't know if this is a boy or a girl bear. And then just pop on in front of mama bear, just like so. And there we've got our sentiment, the front. We've got adorable polar bear, whoops, with baby skating. Opening it up, and we're seeing our other designer series paper piece, our sentiment, and then our note to our end. Is it that little? I absolutely love this stamp set. Let me show you. Um, I actually made a little sample card of this. I gotta grab it. Figure out what I was gonna make this week. If you love this card, show me some love, friends. Hearts all over the place. So here's the first one I made um, with red as a base. And then that card front layer, I made a little bit shorter. I think I like out a little bit better, but I went to stand it up to take a picture and I noticed that it doesn't stand up very well. So for those of you who are sending this to friends that you like um, on their shelves, um, you may want to make your front piece a little bit taller. So that's a tip there. Um, let's see. I'm going to post all the dimensions for this because we've got a lot of layers in my blog and I'll post the replay on YouTube. So for those of you who are watching the replay on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel too. So other videos from me. Um, all right, let me do a little bit of cleanup here. So the prizes, I'm super excited for prizes. We've got two weeks is to do. So I have three of them that I'm giving away instead of two. And just a reminder that Tuesday, I've got a virtual stamp class live here on Facebook. I'm going to show you guys some man cards. I get a lot of people um, telling me hard time making gender neutral or Madeline -like cards that um, they need a little help creation and that and some creative coaching. So we're going to make some man card on Tuesday night at seven o'clock right here. All right. Oh, yeah, I have three prizes. Okay, um, and I have a couple other events in November. I've got one on Thanksgiving and on Black Friday. So you know what I'm going to do? Let me this quick. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. All three of you watching. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what we are going to be Black Friday. This is going to be awesome. I love it. I hope that the glare isn't too much. This is a shadow box and we've got a wintry center. Isn't that full? We're gonna make that on Black Friday. I'm gonna show you how. So make sure that you have liked and followed my Facebook page for those of you catching the replay and um, join in the fun on that. All right, prize time, let's see on my prizes again. Okay. So I'm going to I do prizes this way. Okay. We've got likes and comments from one of my events a couple weeks ago. I'm giving away this plaid beautiful Christmas card that I made. This goes to Robin Stender. Congratulations, Robin. <clears throat> Robin, I do not have your address, so if you could send me a private message with your address, I would love to get this in the mail to you this week. Um, and then we've got another one for likes and comments. Uh, this one, I'm giving away my printed card. I made this with the um, Opera Pumpkin Kit, a beautiful layered card. And, of course, we've got some inside stamping going on. Um, this one goes to Margaret Brady. Congratulations, Margaret. And I have your address, so if you could send me a private message, I would love to get this in the mail to you this week. And then my last prize is going, so it's not too late to share, guys. You can share this right on your Facebook. Just click that share button up in the corner, or maybe it's down below here, um, because that enters you to win the best prize of all. You can share it right now and be entered next week for my sharing prize. I have a card kit to make these pocket cards that I did in my live, not live, from last week. So the video tutorial is in the replay of my live, not live from, um, would have been October 28th. So this card kit comes with everything you need, pre-cut, pre-ready to go, right here. 
pocket. And the winner of that is Tammy Florence. Thank you. Congratulations, Tammy. I have your address. Thank you for sharing my um, video. I so appreciate it. I will get all of these prizes out this week. And um, let's see. I just want to leave my celebrations um, now. I'll post that on my page. But anyway looking at my notes that looks to be everything so if you need supplies make sure you shop with me i'll put the link up above and um i appreciate your business and your support check out the dimensions in my blog and join me right here next week for some more lunchtime live stamping at 11 central standard time i go live every wednesday otherwise i also hope to see you next week tuesday for my virtual class where i'm making at least three man cards so have a great rest of your day, everyone, and to seeing you and stamping with you again soon. Bye.